snowboarding from Ehrenberg. Today we're still working on the bus. Surprise, surprise. Check out these new parts I got today. This is the uh, fan selector switch for, you know, this thing right there. The other one was totally fried. Actually, the other one's right here. If you didn't see yesterday's video, that is a hole <laughs> from heat. And on the back side, it's totally just fried. Way too hot. This is what uh, a proper one looks like. Look at that, nice and clean. There's that O-ring. What do you say, dude? There's that O-ring. That thing that you can't take off because you'll break it. <laughs> you got it. You use an O-ring pick like that. And then what you do is you, if you're by yourself, you jam this on a table or something and tap right on there to get this pulley off. Uh -huh. And you use the weight of the fan to take it off. Take it off. I put a little bit of penetrating oil on there. Uh -huh. So you just tap it a little bit, eh? And it'll start moving, right? Oh, interesting. So then tap that and don't miss. <laughs> That's tr this is like the uh, the trust fall right here. There. All right. It'll come off, right? Yep. So then you put this on, saves yourself thirty bucks again. Look at you. Badge just saved me. So proud of you. <laughs> Badge just saved me thirty bucks right there with this fancy trick. Uh, this store wanted to sell me this uh, the fan blades, which we just took off right there and that is the the motor and see sometimes they don't do that but now you have a spare clip all right we can Look use a new that. clip on there too yeah you're the man dude i don't even know how can i repay you you know i was thinking about that the other night you know? yeah the other day i was thinking about that last night you know and and i talked to my a couple friends of mine carol and our rv life and you know she asked me why i do this and i says the reason is is you do some do some favor for somebody that cannot repay it. And that's because there's no way anybody can repay this to me, right? That's true. So uh, that's why I do it. Well, thank you. Oh, by the way, this morning I stopped by and got him a Cinnabon. Yeah, I got a Cinnabon. How's that for repayment? That's pretty good. <laughs>
me and uh, Tater did that before, but uh, it came off, it rattles a ton. And then we got the fog light situated. What else we get? Oh, we also got this here uh, antenna for the FM radio. I've never had an antenna and I wondered why I was not getting a signal. I thought it was some kind of fancy thing like a snub nose one, but this thing just pops off. And that's where you're... Yeah. <laughs> Antenna. Exactly. Yo, that's right with a strip chassis. It probably didn't come with one. So, anyways, uh, thank you so much. Bring it in. Sorry, this guy's buddy. amazing. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything else for him to fix. I feel like uh, I should well, go. He'll come up with something. <laughs> he'll come up with something. That's true. Well, gotta say, it feels really good to be done. All these little things have been on my mind for a long time but I didn't know how to do them and without Badge's help um, I really don't know when those would have been fixed uh, some things are <laughs> a little overwhelming for a beginner like the uh, cruise control steering column stuff and some stuff is is actually just hard to diagnose like I didn't realize that this switch was toast and um, those sorts of things you know, it's like you could get yourself down a rabbit hole real quick. And uh, just want to say thank you to Badge for all your help. <clears throat> and uh, on the way to the parts store and pick up some stuff this morning, I stopped by and I filled up his tank. But he doesn't know that. I did bring him a Cinnabon though. Check out that sunset. Sunset time. Also, we are topping off the solar batteries. Not quite sure why it never is at 100%. That's not my area of expertise. Also, tonight, Badge is whipping up some uh, shrimp on the... Shrimp on a stick. Shrimp on the bobby, baby. And some, uh, just know that life's really hard on us. <laughs> we got a really big bore on steel to get some food, but Ooh. we'll try to get this and choke it down. But, well, look at that. Yeah. Hashtag try to choke it rough down. life. Rough life, rough exactly. Life. <laughs> Not many people will see it. <laughs> so, life. Um, would you care to share how many years you've been at this? 20. 20 years? Yeah. So I mean, you... I think it's 20 this year. What What was your first Nomad rig? It was a 79 Mabco 18 foot. It's made in Canada and Lethbridge, and it was a, it was a good trailer. And so, I lived in that for um, almost 15 years. And where would you park that for 15 well, years? I parked at the racetrack because they had a problem with uh, security, right? Because, uh, well, Rob and Kim up in Canada were great. They're good friends of mine. And they were living way out in the side of town. So for when every time the alarm went off, they'd have to call or go and reset it. Mm. So Kim says, well, you know, it'd be cool if we could find somebody to live here. I'll do that. <laughs> so I lived there for up until from 2000 till 2013. So almost 13 years. And then since then, what have you been well, doing? Well, then I moved into town for two years and I got married. And then after that, I was married from 20... Uh, 2010, I moved in. 2010 to 2015, um, 14, and then after my wife passed away, I uh, moved back out to the racetrack because that's where all my friends are, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then me and Ellen got together, and this is the only way to go because I just, after being a nomad for that long and not owning a thing, like I had never owned nothing anymore, anymore, but. Um, this is the only way to go because I can afford to live in town at $1,800 a month rent and Al couldn't. So I said, well, we'll just buy a trailer, 300 bucks a month. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> and then uh, you come down here in the wintertime. Well, we come in now, we watched uh, Bob Wells' movie and said, oh, come to Ehrenberg. Because, uh, see, the problem was that I always worked in the winter. Like, my job I had was with camp services or working on trucks, and I'd always work in the winter. 
because that's and I love working in the winter. I I loved it. You know, you can always dress for the winter. You can't dress for this stuff. But um, I always worked in the winter, so I worked in the winter up until last year when we come down here, and uh, everybody thought it was kind of weird because I always worked winter, always. So then when I come down here, I said, man, Al, this is pretty good. We can do this. So <laughs> then we come down this year. So we come down for our 180, or well, not quite 180 days. We come down from um, October till, till March. And then, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but you know, it's good. Like, um, like everybody goes on, it's nomadic and all that, but it's not, it's a life. Like this is our life. This is everything we got right here. Do you have do you think you're missing out on life because you don't no. have an apartment? No, not at all. How's your quality? We got a better quality of life now than we did if we had an apartment, because we have a lot more money to. Like we're both retired, so you know we're not living on a ton of money. So the thing is, is that the money we're getting, we can live pretty good, as you see. We got shrimp tonight, so <laughs> you know it's all good. But um, no, it's it's just I don't know. I wouldn't trade it for the world. And if I ever did it over again, I'd do it the same way. Yeah. Because it's it's a good, well, look at, like, look at this. Like, people pay millions and millions of dollars for this stuff, and we got it for free. And you guys are Canadian. And we're Canadian. <laughs> and so you're benefiting. It's all good. Uh, on, on my land. Well, exactly. I'm, uh, well, welcome to my land. I'm happy to have you. <laughs> I know. It's, it's paid back. It goes the same way. You guys come to Canada, we'll show you where the free stuff is. But, it wasn't exactly free because I had you working on the bus. Just, you know, that was like your rent, you know, for uh, my land here. Okay. That works. <laughs> Anyways. You no, know, it's just, I don't know. It's a really good life, and I, I can't see it ending very soon. Yeah. You know, and it's, like, it's inexpensive. Like, can everybody do it? Maybe not. But if you got a little bit of, just a little tiny bit of ambition and you want to change, you can do it. Like, it's not that hard. And with the RVs nowadays, like, everybody says RVs, you can't live in them. Well, we've been in this one for three years, and we haven't had no problems with it at all. Mm -hmm. So. And by the way, you want to explain what this is? A 20... Flagstaff V Light. Now, the reason we got this is people will probably get you all kinds of comments, but the reason we got this was the tapered nose and it's 8,000 pounds, and we got a 21 DS Flagstaff, and I can pull this for almost the same amount of gas as the little one, right? And how many feet is this? This is 36. Okay. We call it a 30, but it's really 36. And like this has got every, like when like when I me and Al got into it, I said there's some things I will not get rid of my big bed, I will not get rid of the shower, and I will not get rid of the living room, and the kitchen, and it's all in there. It's a little bigger to haul, but it's life, right? It, yeah. You know, there's not much you can change on it. Like I'm not a van person, and you know yourself, you can't live in a school bus. <laughs> Me and her couldn't, and the dog couldn't live in a school That'd bus. That'd be a tight squeeze. But this is really comfortable, like really, really comfortable. Now, would you would you recommend this to other retirees? Because I know my... Oh, I would totally. Like if you're having a problem paying rent, or you're having a problem with this, or you don't like the neighbor next door, there's one thing about this thing I found out, that if you don't like your neighbor, you hook it on your truck, and then you go see if the other neighbor's all right. <laughs> Because there's nowhere to, there's, like, you guys have got it made. you got 650 million acres of this stuff. Like, we don't have that in Canada. So you got 600 million acres of this stuff. Like, it's unbelievable. No, I would, like, anybody that's having an issue with rent or money or anything, because you can honestly do this. Two people can do this for less than $1,000 each. Wow. Yeah. Like we don't like go together, to party. Yeah. less than thousand yeah, dollars for two go people. And party or nothing. And the thing about this is, is, this is not paid for. None of this is paid for, because we allotted X amount of dollars for this, right? And there's no need to. It's like paying rent, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't have a problem with it. And like so you know, because you got the the payment for the truck you got the payment and everything's new so you don't have to worry about it breaking down but you still have to work on it I didn't say you didn't have to work on it yeah but you know it's 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 really good like i this is great like if i was if i would have done this 
when I was 20 years old, I would be scared to think of what how much money I'd have. Like, it's unbelievable. Because when you sit down and you think you got no rent, you have no taxes, you have no gas bill. Well, you got a gas bill, but not really. You don't have no hydro bill, and you don't have no water bill. That changes your life a ton. Like, you can play around a lot with that. Even with a little bit. Just with that little bit, right? And the thing about it is, is like, this, we're sitting on the desert, and we're not plugged in. We don't have water, and we don't have sewer. And we're living just quite comfortable. Uh, how, how about the uh, uh, other people in the area? What do you, do you think they're pretty the other nice or mean in the or what? They're awesome because you got people all around here and they know you're a nomad. So when you're like, tomorrow we're going to go into Ehrenberg and dump the tanks, right? I'll leave my, my antenna there and I'll leave my lawn chairs and a barbecue and all that stuff here. And I'll go in, dump the tank, come back, and it'll all be here. Because all these people know, well, that's his stuff, right? They all watch out for each other. I don't know them, but I know they watch out just like I watch out for them. It's kind of camaraderie, huh? Exactly. And everybody's waving at each other. Exactly. Everybody's waving at you, and I don't know any of them. So, you know, that's the way it is. But it's really, like, it's so hard to explain because people always say, oh, you can move out, and you can do it, and you can do it. Well, yeah, you can do it. But it's not a walk in the park. You have to work at it, right? It's, it's you got to just walk in the park. You know, we don't, we're not YouTubers, so we don't spend all day making movies, but, you know, we got our thing. We get up and drink coffee for two hours and talk about life, and then we have, we don't, we only get down to two meals because we're not working, but, you know, we, you know, it's a tough life, and then we have supper around five, six o'clock, then we sit by the fire at night and shoot the breeze with the neighbors, <laughs> and then we go to bed about ten. 9, 30, 10. Yep. Wake up tomorrow morning and start it all over again. Two hours of coffee, you know. <laughs> it's a pretty relaxed lifestyle. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. You know, when you're you're in our boat, like I've been pounding it for 40, 50 years, you know, trying to make a living to what we're supposed to. And then you just say, hmm, I like this. So, yeah, it's hard. But after you get used to it, it's... You know, it's it's really good. It's really good. Yeah. Like I would never like ten years ago, you couldn't catch me down here. But now, you can't catch me not going. I'm trying to figure out how I can become a citizen without getting married. So I'm trying <laughs> to work on that one. But no, it, it's really good. Like any retirees or people have it, even people that are having trouble with money, like trying to make ends meet, it works. Like I'm not a car person, so I wouldn't recommend that. And if you're single, you can do a van or a B or something like that or a motorhome or something like that. But the thing I like about this is we can unhook the truck and we got we can go wherever we want and everything's good, right? So it's it's a really good lifestyle. Like I don't really call it lifestyle. I just call it our life. That's what we do. It's our life, right? Because we sold everything off. This is all we got. Like the truck's full of tools. Because, you know, being a mechanic, you can only get rid of so many tools. So <laughs> that's why we got the truck with the canopy. And by the way, you, you had everything to fix the bus. I had everything to fix everything. the bus. <laughs> and the good part about it was that I took tools out that I thought I didn't need, and we used them. So we now did. I'm good for next year. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story, by the way. And thank you for your friendship and the hospitality that you've showed well, me over the past few days. See, that's the thing. All the you help. come out here, and, like, nobody knows you not. And, like... Well, it's not arrogance or nothing. It's just that a lot of people couldn't afford me anyway. And out here, the a lot of people don't make a ton of money. So if I'm out here fixing their stuff for them, or helping them, I don't fix it, but helping them, then it's just money they don't spend, like we said about yours. If I didn't help you fix that stuff, you probably would have never fixed it because you don't have the money for it, right? But now it's all fixed. And that's like anybody else. The car breaks down or they need a boost or... I'll give him. A, I'll fix it. It's not yeah. a big deal to me, you know. Yeah, so. you're a good dude. I'm a. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to say hi to Billy? <laughs> hi, Billy. I know we miss you. Yeah, he'll fix your 6.0 one of these days. Yeah, we'll pull it out, put a power stroke in there it. There we go. Seven three. Yeah. Cool. <laughs>